podcast, one that preferably is hosted by a UF Hall of Famer, uh, one that airs every weekday that would bring me everything I need to know about the Florida Gators, including news, analysis, and opinions. Siri, is there such a show? Have you heard of Pod Up with Matthews in the morning on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, or any podcast platform? Oh my gosh, why didn't I think of that? You have Hall of Famer Shane Matthews has a show every weekday. I'm going to go check it out tomorrow. Thanks, Siri. Good morning. It's a live edition of Pot Up with Matthews in the morning. From the Crime Prevention Security System Studios, large enough to serve you, small enough to care. It is Wednesday, uh, hump day. We're supposed to have JC. I don't know where he is. He's missing. Uh, we'll definitely have Mike Morgan second portion of today's program. Get his thoughts on what happened previously in the NCAA tournament and what he thinks will happen in the Sweet 16. If you got any other questions for Mike, shoot them our way. Um, got a lot of comments already here about baseball. Baseball gets uh, run rule last night by the semis. Um, I totally understand, but I have zero concerns because all that matters are the SEC games. Uh, Joe on Facebook Live brought to you by Mel Law says, Princely Umania, I can't pronounce his last name, continues to bash the UF coach staff every chance to get. That's fine. Look, I, I saw some quotes of his, whatever. I will tell you this, as y'all have heard me say multiple times, and it's a saying in the National Football League, the eye in the sky don't lie. Princely had some flashes, but he was lazy as hell majority of the time and did not play hard. That is not on any coach, regardless of the coaches. I don't care who's coaching. If you don't play hard, that's that's on you. And that kid did not play hard majority of the time. Um, you can believe what you want. Maybe it's true, maybe it's not. But what you can believe is the eye in the sky does not lie. The tape does not lie. He did not play hard and give tremendous effort like he should have. So uh, I'll leave it at that. Uh, we're still waiting on JC to have no idea where he is today. Uh, again, Florida State. Uh, uh, hammered the Gators last night in baseball and get ready for a weekend series against Mississippi State that's more important than the uh, midweek games. Um, Greg says, why did I say Caitlin Clark played her last game? I didn't say that. I said this is her last year. She is going to the NBA, uh, WNBA. Uh, Buck says, Princely play like a quitter at times. That's, that's a fact. That is a fact. So. Um, Christopher on YouTube says he took a bunch of plays off. He did. The eye in the sky does not lie. So, uh, text on the Titan of our text line from Jack in Naples said this baseball team is ridiculous. Got destroyed in both games against FSU. It's unacceptable and embarrassing. Sully needs to make some changes. Again, Jack, I respect your, your, uh, text, but Sully knows more about his team and more about baseball than any of us on this program. And I have zero concerns about the baseball team. So we'll leave it at that. Uh, softball uh, continues to roll. They have a weekend series at Mississippi State. They're 29 and four, folks. They are very good. This could be one of Tim's better teams. And um, I know y'all don't like to talk softball, but I do. I have no idea where JC is. So anyway. Uh, Clint says, Shane, please give Kevin O on here so we can ask him why we can't win a week that well, well, he was on at the beginning of the year. I don't bother him during the season. Um, is he trying to win the game? Yes. Is he going to waste pitching to win the games? No. Uh, Dan says, Sully's working other pitchers in midweek. Two out of three at LSU is a big deal. It's a very big deal. Two out of three against A&M. People, A&M. And LSU are both ranked in the top 10. I think they're like number five and six, right around there. Okay. I don't even know if FSU is even ranked. So don't care. Uh, I wanted to get to this with JC, but I guess he's not going to, he's going to no show Andy. Andy asks, what's your opinion of the new X, uh, NFL kickoff rule? Similar. It's, it is the XFL rule from what I could tell. Uh, it avoids collisions and it's supposed to at least make the guys return the football. Uh, so we will see. It's a, it's a one year. A uh, trial. Now, the the other change in the NFL rules, the hip drop or whatever they call that tackle, I think is total nonsense. Guys are not trying to hurt people with that. That's the way people have been tackling for years. I think it's absolutely ridiculous that they're making that a penalty. 
I don't even know. I guess it's just a 15 yard penalty. Um, I don't know what else, but uh, I, I think it's absolutely, I don't know what y'all's opinions are on it, but I think it's ridiculous. Yeah. Robert says he doesn't like it either. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know how you're going to determine what a hip drop tackle is and what one's not. There's so much gray area there. And I just, again, the rules are favoring the offense. You know, pass interference can be called on every damn play. So, anyway, um, still no JC. Dan says the hitting in softball, the defense, softball is at the top of the nation. Freshman pitchers are looking great. Yeah, we we are hitting the baseball uh, softball extremely well. Tim always plays great defense, but we have pitching that we have not had in quite some, to, some time. So, uh, Greg says FSU is number 17. Okay. All right, whatever. Somebody told me the other day they were ranked. Uh, they, by the way, I think they have a losing record in the ACC for whatever that's worth. Again, I lose zero sleep over it. Again, y'all should not worry about it. I know it's bragging rights because I know people at the water cooler at work talk crap, uh, but I would not worry about it. <clears throat> Michael says college softball is awesome. Any yeah. guy that doesn't like to watch college girls in the tight pants has issues. JC, you're late. That is a huge, huge time. <laughs> the huge damn time. clock was the clock was blinking when I woke up, and I I woke well, up at JC, five o'clock. JC, let me let me give you a pointer here. I don't know what the hell do, happened. Do you, do you do you set an alarm? No. Okay, so the clock is a lame ass excuse then. Because I was well, going to say, if you if you set an alarm to wake up, use your phone because your phone is not going to worry about your electricity when you don't pay uh, the bill. Yeah, I don't, you know, I don't know. I was up at 5 o'clock this morning, and I was just laying there, and next thing you know, it's 8.06. <sighs> oh. Well, excuse me, more importantly, more importantly, I've got a solution for why – and I heard this the other day on another podcast, but I've got a solution for, for what we can do to try to clean up these basketball games and not have to watch guys shoot free throws all night. Here is the idea. And this is really not that innovative. And I believe it to be the, the, the answer to keep us from having to watch guys shoot free throws and listen to whistles getting blown all night long. And the answer is you do it like the women are doing their basketball. You go to quarters instead of halves, men's basketball, College men's college basketball is the only sport or only basketball format that uses halves. So instead of halves, you go to quarters like they do in the women's game and like they do in every other basketball league. And then you reset the team fouls after the first and third quarter. And that way we don't have to sit there and literally watch guys shoot free throws the entire night. That that's what, that's the answer. That's the, that's the way you would clean it up. But I think it'd make the viewing experience a lot better for us poor people watching these damn basketball games and sitting there looking at guys shoot free throws all night. What do you think of that idea? I think you're still, if they call fouls, you're still going to shoot free throws. Yeah, but you may not get to seven fouls as quick. Yeah, you, they don't have, you, It's only five and quarters, JC. Well, I mean, you do whatever you want. I'm just saying, if you reset well, no, the rule. Fouls, okay, so then reset it. Reset it after the first or third qu uh, uh, quarter, and I think you'll have a better game. Uh, yeah. Now, QB, uh, I think, you know, because men's college basketball is just – sometimes it just gets bogged down with these – these uh, you know, the, the the charge rule has basically turned it now into the blocking rule. Blocking gets called a lot more than charging does. And I, I just don't like it as much. And, you know, some examples of what we had to endure last weekend with the Alabama Grand Canyon game and, and the Houston game were just – it was almost – it was just hard to watch for me. It, for me, that was just my problem. Now, you know, we'll see what happens. But tomorrow night and Friday night, do you want to pick some of these games for the Peachland Dental Picks contest other than just doing golf? Would you like to throw the basketball in there? Sure, we can do that. Um, I was reading some of these uh, – These, uh, I don't know why Facebook doesn't let me go up and down well, here. You, you've been talking about this for a month and a half. It doesn't It doesn't let you scroll. If you're, if you're on your phone, you can scroll, but on the laptop, it doesn't allow it. Okay. All right, so let me read a bunch of these texts. I've already read a few – um, this is from wherever the 252 area code is. I don't know where that is. You have football fell behind in every area, pre and post NIL. We may never catch uh, up, unfortunately. Well, Time will tell. This is from. Yes. 
Someone in the 941 area code says, FSU's 2-0 against us so far this year and absolutely dominated us last night. These midweek games against teams like FSU absolutely yeah. matter. Last night was very embarrassing. I agree, but I don't really care. I mean, I don't. I, I really don't because right you now we're 4-2 and two in the SEC, and that's yeah. all that matters. Hmm. Um, well, then, you know, why are, why are we playing games in the middle of the week, QB? Why don't we just say, you know well, what? Well, it's, 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 get, it's to get the Friday, young kids – Young kids uh, ready to play. So they're like exhibition games, in my opinion. <laughs> but they're not, though. <laughs> they're not exhibition games, right? I mean, they're not. But they don't games. matter. I mean, I heard two people yesterday uh, that know baseball. They said that the committee, all the committee cares about is your conference play, and especially when you're in the SEC. Now, mm -hmm. look, I don't like to lose the FSU in anything. Right. But they beat us. What? What? Like I try to tell people. I, before you came on when you were sleeping, I told people, <laughs> I told people, Sully knows more baseball than any of us on this stupid podcast. Okay. Yes. And he knows his team. I don't think it's a stupid podcast. And I, I'm, I, I'm, but my point is, we can sit here and criticize or say this, you know, well, let's pitch this guy. Why does he take this guy? Look, let Sully coach. That's what he's done. He's, he's, he makes a lot of money. And he knows his baseball well, more I, than we look, do. I don't think anybody's asking Sully for the keys to the car here. I think they're just voicing frustration that, you know, what what the heck is it with these guys during the week? That's all. That's all they're saying. Well, the pitchers aren't pitching well. And I agree that if you're a backup, using football terms, if you're a four, five, or six guy and you're young and you're at the University of Florida, you should be able to get some people out. They, ha they have not. Yeah. 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 Um, Josh in Mississippi wants to know what home games am I most excited about to call next season? Uh, I mean, obviously the opener is going to be fun against Miami. It's been a oh, while since they've been here, but I guess point. we have Miami here. Uh, LSU comes here. Ole Miss comes here. What other good games coming, JC? I can't remember. Well, I but, think uh, I think we've got the uh, is Kentucky. Uh, yeah, Kentucky's here. I don't um, give a name. I, I mean, that's not that's not a game that Kentucky. I look forward to. Well, I think Kentucky is is definitely a game you have to win. I mean, if well, you I can't, that's not what he asked. He asked, well, "What am I most excited about next the home games?" Okay. Kentucky's not on my radar as one of the exciting <laughs> games. <laughs> well, okay. Well, is um, you know, I, by the way, just in case anybody really cares, and I know this is is way out in front of the train here, but the twenty five schedule is out. Would you like to know who the Gators are playing at home in twenty twenty five too? No. Yeah. Would you get? Well, you know, no. We're, we're, the people we're playing in 2025. It's the same exact schedule. You're just flipping it. You're flipping it. Yep. That's yeah. right. That's right. Texas will be here. Texas will be here in 25, as will uh, Mississippi State. That is absolutely correct. Yeah. Yeah. And then maybe um, in 26, these guys will get smart and um, play nine games so that they you get a chance to play everybody in this r rather bloated league we have of 16 teams. So I, I, I would like to see nine games, but it won't happen at, at the very earliest until 2026. All right, JC, uh, before we get into picks and stuff, I want to get your thoughts. I talked about this a little bit about the new NFL rules. They've gone to the XFL kickoff rule where everybody yeah. starts on like the th – the, the 30 or 35 and they're five yards apart. It, it, yeah, I heard that. It, it eliminates the collisions, but it makes you have to return to football and you usually don't get very good field position, which is kind of cool. Uh, right. But then the drop, the hip drop tackle makes no sense to me at all. I think it's the a hip stu drop. It's a, it's a I, stupid what, rule. What the heck is that? The hip drop tackle? Yeah, well, a lot of guys, I think they said, I saw where they had like 270 something hip drop tackles, 15 guys got hurt and missed time. Big freaking deal. I mean, <laughs> they're going to call a penalty pretty much every time somebody gets tackled now. It's the way it looks. Yeah, sure sounds like I it. I think it's I, ridiculous. It's, it's ridiculous. So well, yeah, as far as the kickoff thing goes, I I, I don't care. You know, I don't care, QB. Whatever they, you know, look, it's that's not something that uh, I, I worry about. I don't really know how – exciting kickoffs are anyway anymore because the ball goes in well they're gonna this this will make it more exciting because you're gonna probably have to return it right and, and yeah it's better than the ball flying through the end zone right because if i remember correctly in the xfl if you kicked it in the end zone you automatically got the ball at like the 35 yard line so mm -hmm. if they're using the exact rules where the guy kind of has to pooch it inside the five to 
guarantee the guy runs the ball, um, you're you're it's hard to block. So it'll be yeah. interesting. Um, Mike, everybody's telling me what to do about my computer here. Um, it's a Facebook thing because Facebook used to allow me to go up and down. They change their stuff like it seems like okay. once a month or something. Jimmy, um, okay, read some text messages real quick. I got I got to do something real quick. Just read some text messages. Okay, I'll read some text messages. We'll uh, <laughs> JC. So Jimmy says use an i use an iPad for FBook. I don't have an iPad, Jimmy. You want to purchase me one? Uh, I have all these laptops. Uh, 31 Ember on YouTube brought to you by Quality Plum says F FSU just swept, was just swept by Clemson in baseball, beating UF as their World Series. Um, yeah, whatever. Uh, 31 Ember, me and, me and JC put on pads and demonstrate the hip drop tackle. Um, I, I just don't understand it. I really don't. I know the defensive guys are really upset in the National Football League. I don't blame them. Uh, it's so hard to play defense nowadays. All right. Uh, JC will be right back. Uh, Greg says only 21% of the kickoffs returned last year. Dan says you get a third challenge. Okay. Well, it went away. I apologize, folks. Bruce Ogre State Farm Office is a team of dedicated insurance professionals ready to help life go right with the right insurance options for you and your family. Visit ogreinsurance.com. Give them a call at 352-240-1779. Um, we'll have Mike Morgan second portion of today's program. Okay. If you if you missed it last night, oh. Georgia wins at Ohio State. Indiana State wins at home. Oh. Uh, so we'll have Georgia playing Indiana State in That's the uh, NIT finals at the uh, Hinkle Fieldhouse. That's where the finals are this year. Yeah, and I guess the other game will be des uh, decided tonight. That's in Indianapolis, and those Sycamores, baby, who I was screaming should have gotten in the big dance. Had 10,000 or more fans at their arena last night for that Cincinnati game, and I actually watched that, and I was really happy for them. They had this guy named uh, – this big, tall guy with glasses who can shoot yeah. the lights. Oh, big he's white guy. Avila. Avila is his last name, Avila. And uh, he he uh, brought him back. He brought him back from the dead. The Sycamores are going to go an hour and a half up the road to play at Eagle Field House in Indianapolis. It's it's you know what the NIT should get a lot of credit because they did something different this year. Maybe Mike Morgan can tell you, but maybe nobody cares. I'll tell you what: twelve thousand people last night in Terre Haute, Indiana, cared, and it it meant something. And good for them. Uh, Zach wants to know on YouTube. Brought to you by Quality Plum. Any basketball names to discuss? Lots of players in the portal. Uh, Zach, I'll be honest with you. I don't know if anybody here who knew who Zion Pullen was or Walter Dr. Clayton, Clayton Junior. Or Tyree Samuel, Will honestly. Richard, Will Richard. Will, as this was year two for Will Richard, so uh, that's true. You're um, right. Well, I, I so anyway, think, uh, just I think Ty Golden will bring in some good players. It, it just it doesn't it though just eat at you that that these guys aren't playing games right now. I just wish they were still playing. I don't know. I, well, it really was course. exciting. There's a lot. There's I, a lot of teams around America that wish they were still playing. Well, but I, not, we don't care about that. But you're right. I just, you know, I think for the first time I really got excited watching a Gator basketball game where, um, you know, I, I was – I really felt terrible after they lost. And that – I don't know what that makes me, but um, – and I'm sure it had a lot to do with the fact that uh, this was a, uh, you know, loser leave town game essentially. But it, it bothered me that they lost to Colorado. It just did. All right. The Stay in Sports brought to you by Campus USA Credit Union. Put some star power to work in your financial life with Campus USA <sighs> Credit Union. This day in twenty in 2000, the PGA Championship, Players Championship at TPC. Yeah. Sal Hutton goes wire to wire and defeats Tiger Woods. That's <laughs> where he said, be the shot today or something. They, they you know, he hit the shot in the, um, in the playoff there. It was on hole number four. Uh, that's the hole that Scotty Scheffler um, – Pulled out from the fairway the other day, yeah. and uh, it rolled literally almost in the cup. They hit this ball. You hit it in the middle of, of the green, and the way that green works right to left, the ball almost rolled in for Hal Sutton. But you're right. That was his uh, signature moment in his golf career. And Tiger Woods, um, he, he lost that. Somebody, somebody here is asking me. I can see the bottom of the text or, or Facebook Live message yeah. about how much have I seen us throw on air much. Uh, we have a period of about – I guess about 10 minutes. 
Uh, we used to spend about an hour. Uh, that's my favorite. When I coach high school ball, we throw for hours on routes on air. That's the way you can become a really good passer. That's just my opinion. There's not many coaches that do that, but I learned from – that's what we did with Coach right. Burr, so that's what I do. Um, yeah. They have so many periods nowadays. It doesn't. This isn't a Billy Napier. This was with Will Muschamp, McElwain, every coach. They do all these periods to keep guys active. Um, yeah. I'm all about taking the receivers and the quarterbacks to a field by themselves. Right. Lining up on different hash marks, middle of the field, uh, spacing, timing, all that. But repetition, 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 repetition. All right, JC, it's Peachland Dentistry, Gator Nation's number one choice for dentistry, Port right. Charlotte, surrounding areas. Go visit them at peachlanddental.com. All right, let's do our golf picks first. Um, okay. They're out in Houston. Yes. Um, so I've jotted down a few of my players. <laughs> I pretty much know who you're going to pick. I try to stay away from your picks because I just don't want to be that guy. What does that mean, that guy? You don't own any of these guys, and I don't. Brandon, Brandon says, "Be the right club today, baby. Be the right club today." That's, that's, that's what right. Hal Sutton said. Well, we're going to start with, and I don't know why he's playing in this tournament. Uh, well, <laughs> that's actually, why I did take him because I knew actually, you were going to take I do, him. I, I do know why he's playing in this tournament. It's only about three and a half hours from where he lives. And by the way, I watched. On the Netflix series Full Swing, the uh, episode four of season two, which was all about your favorite golfer, Juwan Kim, who is, goes by Tom Kim. And the reason why it's Thomas the Train, that little blue train mm -hmm. uh, that we all grew up with as children, that's what Tom Kim loved. And that's why his name is Tom Kim. And he was a uh, he was featured on that uh, Netflix feature. So if you, if you really love that guy, then uh, you would want to watch that. Scotty Scheffler is my guy here at the Houston Open. Because Shocker. He, <laughs> he he's played. the best player in the world, hands down. Not even doesn't close. mean he's going to win, though. QB, you know no, that. it doesn't, but he, he'll be in the hunt. Uh, I will take Will Zalatoris, the yeah. Demon Deacon. Yeah, he's right there next to uh, Scheffler here on this list. Um, you know, some of these golfers, I, I just, honest to God, I've never heard of. But I. I uh, I think uh, in Texas, I think there's something about the ground in Texas, where it's, it's, if you play there a long, large part of your life, you have some sort of that you know how to play it there. I don't know. I just like I like um, I like in this tournament Wyndham Clark, another great player who to me is world ranked number four, uh, U.S. Open champion. I'm going to go with him, even though it's not a major. Uh, watch him play. See see how he does. He was uh, 19 under at the Players Championship, tied for second, almost won it. And uh, I'm going to go with Clark. Thank you. All right, you're taking the Oregon Duck by way of Oklahoma yeah. State. I'm sure. going to take the Georgia Bulldog, Cashmere Keith Mitchell. Boy, he really kind of, you know what, in Tampa, didn't he? I mean, he mm -hmm. just spit the bit. Uh, he he had his chances, and he couldn't close the deal. QB, doesn't that bother you that a guy? It was it's it's a different week, JC. I mean, well, it is, it is. I think he's going to be. Um, I don't know. I, I okay, I got you. All right, you get Cash Marquis. I'm going to take another guy that uh, not a fa This is not a, a well known player, but he has one on tour. He won at Bay Hill. Maybe it was a year or two ago, and that would be Kurt Kitayama. Uh, I like his game. I think Kurt he's Kitayama. He's a UNLV guy, coached by yeah. JC Deacon. Yes, Kurt Kitayama is my third pick. And I'll take Sahith the Gala from Pepperdine. So those are uh, our picks I watched for golf. Um, we'll do but some – JC. Do the um, Go ahead. Dan Go says he's never never seen Thomas the Train. Maybe you watch it all the time. I don't think Thomas the Train was around when I grew up, JC. Well, on Netflix, uh, Tom Kim has Thomas the Train all over the place. All right. Well, Tom Kim is 19 <laughs> years old, too. You're 620. He's twenty. Okay, he's twenty now. But well, my I kid played with Thomas the Train when he was when he was born. You just said that you watched it growing up. No, no, I was watching last. I was watching the Netflix thing last night, and on there, they talked about Thomas the Train. So I'm sorry if I created some confusion there, but there will be no confusion in this final uh, Sweet Sixteen. So far, QB, I have been correct taking the first and second seed in every region. Because to me, this oh, is about the favorite. That's a pat on the back there. Well, it really is. Twos. It really is because I'm not over here. See, look, I'm patting myself because I'm not over here talking about how James Madison's going to beat Duke. Wow. So uh, uh, let's rewind. You said the exact <laughs> damn thing on this program. 
I I agreed with you. I didn't say it. I just agreed. You agree. Agreed, yes. But <laughs> it didn't help that James Madison, the player of the year in their conference, got two fouls in the first two minutes of the game and uh, had to that, see that, it. it was over right there. And it was the and it, and I will say this. It was the best game Duke has played all year, and yeah. they shot lights out. Let me yeah. tell you something. I Duke is going to get hit in the freaking mouth in this game oh, coming up. Oh, there is absolutely no doubt about it that these guys are going to run into out of the uh, out of uh, Houston. The game's in Dallas. I think Duke's season ends. But I'm going to start at the top with UConn laying 11 and a half to San Diego State. If San Diego State had the team – now, remember, this is a rematch for the final game last year. This is the, the two finalists from last year. If, if, you know, sometimes you forget. Who played last year? It's kind of like, what did you eat for dinner last night? Sometimes you just can't remember that thing. And so uh, I, I I had a blank, but San Diego State did play for the national championship last year against this team. But I thought they had a, a much more physical team than they do this year, even though they're very physical, very athletic. I don't think they're quite as good offensively as they were last year. And UConn is, like I said, we're all in UConn's world. And maybe there's one team, I think, in the field that can beat UConn on a good night. And that would be Houston. But I'm going to take UConn to cover the 11 and a half. I, I agree with that. Uh, Illinois, your team is catching one and a half against my Cyclones. There's going to be a massive amount of fans in Boston from I the state of Iowa. I think they'll uh, really – You don't think the Illinois not travel at all? I, not like Iowa State, no. So <laughs> I'm going to take Iowa State, brother. I'm, give, I'm taking right. my Cyclones. You take your, your Illini. All right. I think Illinois wins the game. And then in the West uh, tomorrow night, we've got <clears throat> out in Los Angeles – We've got the surprising Clemson Tigers out of the ACC who have put it all together here in the last couple of games, but they're going to run into a very good team in the Arizona Wildcats who are laying seven and a half. Uh, Arizona is, um, they, they can shoot the lights out if they get hot. Uh, they could probably beat anybody in the country. This is maybe another team that might have a chance against uh, UConn, but I think Clemson catching the seven and a half is going to be my pick in this game. All right. I'll, uh, Clemson has just played really probably the best basketball they can possibly play their first yeah. two games. No doubt. Uh, I'm going to say it comes to an end. I'll take Arizona. But their defense, uh, the way they play defense and guarded the three-point line. I agree, but, but Arizona's a different animal. Unbelievable. Yes, They're very you're right. skilled. Uh, very you wanna skilled. Do, you want to do Friday's games? You want me to wait till Friday? We'll just wait till Friday on those. All right. We'll do that. So you've got everything I've got except you took Illinois and you took – Arizona, you're taking all the favorites, and I'm taking all the underdogs. Wait a minute, there's one no, more game. There's one that's more. That's not game. true. You just uh, told me Illinois was an underdog. Illinois is a one and a half point underdog. Yeah. You said I was taking all favorites. Yeah, and you know what? I took UConn, so I'm wrong. Okay, there's one more game, QB. One more game. All right, who is it? The Tar Heels, laying wow. four and a half against Alabama. I. I yeah, I got to be honest and try to be real about this. I can't see how Alabama stays in the game. It keeps it under 10 points in the second half, but I'm going to be a homer and take the four and a half. I don't think it's enough, though. I think North Carolina will win by one. Yeah, I don't know if the, I don't know if Alabama can handle their front line, well, their yeah, front court. And, and it's, a, it's a situation where I don't know if Alabama can play defense as well as they did the other night against Grand Canyon and get away with it uh, without whistles getting blown everywhere. I really hope Alabama shocks the world and wins this, but I don't see how they can beat the Tar Heels, even though it's out in Los Angeles, you know, out there. Yeah. But... <laughs> All right. Well, well we got to get to Mike Morgan, somebody that actually knows what he's talking about. Well, we know what we're talking about. Mike loves us. He watches us too, QB. <laughs> I mean, he's All right, JC, gonna... go back go back to sleep. That's JC joining us on the Titan More Hotline. He's mad at me for being late. We're going to take a quick timeout. JC's going to get right. a uh, – <laughs> What they used to leave in our lockers, it was a pink, uh, little pink slip. Oh, it, that's it, that how much, how much you're fined. Oh, how much you're fine. fine. Okay, uh, that's fine. JC joining us on the Titan Number Hotline. We'll be right back with Mike Morgan from the SEC Network. <laughs> we want to take this moment to thank our sponsors who keep the show going and pay the bills. Our premium sponsors are Prime Prevention Security Systems, large enough to serve you, small enough to care. Titan MRI, Gaines was only locally owned and operated an MRI facility. Melden Law, the only official injury and accident law attorneys of the Florida Gators. Peachland Dental, Gator Nation's first choice for dentistry in Port Charlotte. QC Kinetics, live pain-free with QC Kinetics. Campus USA, put some star power to work in your financial life with Campus USA Credit Union. Comfort Temp, comfort is our business, peace of mind is our promise. 
Dave and Buster's Eat, Drink, Play, Watch. Radware, your local provider of promotional products, uniforms, and apparel. Our gridiron sponsors are Auto ER, UF Bookstores, Silverback Concrete, Ruse Ogre State Farm Insurance, Radware, F45, Quality Plumbing. Our touchdown sponsors are Adams Ribs, Gator Dominoes, Celebrate Primary Care, Gator Bait Media, Okito America, Style Cuts, Ironwood Golf Course, Big Mills Cheese Steak, McDonald's of Gainesville, 84 Lumber, Dowling Signs, Baker Sporting Goods, Silver Q Billiards and Sports Bar. If you're interested in promoting your business on the show, call Freddie at 352-284-3733. If you like what we're doing here, make sure to follow us and support the businesses that support us. Pro football legend Emmett Smith understands your joint pain. It does not surprise me that there are a ton of people out there that's in pain. That's why Emmett is such a proponent of QC Kinetics, offering real lasting joint pain relief with non-surgical, all-natural biologic treatments. Whether it's a joint pain, ankle pain, shoulder pain, neck pain, back pain, hip pain, any kind of pain, the body eventually will break down when it's under that much stress. That stress can cloud your judgment to the point that you'll just say yes to the scalpel or yes to another prescription of pain pills. But maybe it's time for a second opinion from QC Kinetics. The reason why I would recommend this is because the natural biologics that QC Kinetics is providing you gives your body a chance to naturally heal itself. Restorative regenerative solutions are here. Get lasting relief and live your life. Call QC Kinetics 352-400-4550. That's 352-400-4550. QC Kinetics 352-400-4550. Welcome back to the Crime Prevention Security System Studios. Large enough to serve you, small enough to care. Radware is a family-owned business that prides itself in excellent customer service while providing quality and affordable promotional products and customized apparel. We can go to the Titan MR hotline courtesy of Comfort Temp and our man who's brought to us by Campus USA Credit Union, Mike Morgan from the SEC Network, who's on vacation, I think. Mike, how you doing, my man? <laughs> I'm good because I'm on vacation. This is one of the few times I get to do this segment and I'm south of you. I'm down in Lake Worth, Florida. Usually I'm north of you in Atlanta and I get jealous when I'm watching JC do his segment from his screened in pool with birds chirping in the background and ducks flying and all that. I, and I'm sitting there in my concrete jungle of Atlanta, but not today. Today, I am in paradise, and I am happy to be on the show. Yes, indeed. We're glad to have you. Uh, let's just recap a little bit. Uh, obviously, the, the conference didn't do too well uh, so far in the NCAA tournament. Um, are you one of those that, you know, the, these people out there, the SEC should have never gotten eight games, eight teams in, blah, blah, blah. Look, it's what you do during <laughs> the regular season. Anybody can beat anybody in one game in these tournament matchups. Uh, SEC yeah. C was still a very good league, just things didn't work out. That's how I look at it. A hundred percent. I mean, there's no question the eight teams that got in deserve to get in. And if we were just to go based on you know, which league had the has the best tournament run, then are we supposed to now believe the PAC whatever and the ACC, which both of which were not very good, we're now supposed to believe they're the best two leagues in college basketball as opposed to the SEC and the Big 12. Like, no, you can't look at it that way. Again, so often, and I, I find myself doing this in baseball too, you just have to remind people, not everything works like football. Football is insanely predictable for the most part, okay? Yeah. It's the same teams battling for the national championship every year. You don't have major upsets in the postseason in college football. You'll have the occasional crazy weekend in like November where you'll, you know, you'll dub it, upset Saturday, uh, but generally, if your 85 is much better than their 85, you're winning the damn game. That's not like it in basketball. Uh, I told you the last time I was on, I loved the 12 seeds, and none of those 12 seeds had more talent. Two of them, I picked three. Andy Kennedy, uh, I don't want to say let me down. They came close to winning. UAB did, but they came short. But, but Grand Canyon and, and James Madison, who I had in the Sun Belt Championship, they won the games against teams that technically had more talent, but that's not how basketball works, and that's the beauty of March. It's why it never disappoints us. As far as the SEC goes specifically, I mean, it was a great day 
Saturday was to pile on and say, ah, Greg Sankey, you wanted more power teams in there. Uh, you wanted to phase out the mid-majors, which, by the way, all the power commissioners do because everybody looks after their, their own. Uh, mm-hmm. And so people were kind of gleeful about the SEC's tough 48 hours but you know Auburn loses at the last second Florida loses in overtime scores 100 points and loses the game yeah South Carolina was just a bad matchup for Oregon I warned I warned Gamecock fans about that just like I said on your show and I believe JC laughed at me that I didn't I didn't really particularly like this bracket for Florida because I thought Marquette could be a problem well you got to get by Colorado first I thought the most telling thing in that game was the halftime score is 45-42 Colorado. Now, usually those coaching interviews, when they interview you right before you go to the locker room, I don't care what sport it is, they're normally worthless. And I've, I've had to take part in some of them as well. And you just like, do we really got to ask two dumb questions and get two short answers? But but they do it. But this one was actually telling. I loved, I loved Coach Golden's response. He said, well, shoot, you know, we're down 45-42. I promise you this much. Uh, you know, if if we score another 42, I feel good about our chances of winning the game. In other words, we're not giving up another 45. Well, they gave up 58 (laughs) in the the second. So the Florida just played no defense. And uh, look, nobody wants to hear excuses, but losing hand locked in is huge. That's their best rim protector. He's also the second best offensive rebounder in the country. You take him away. Yes, Florida has depth and with their bigs. We talked about that all year. but, but they miss those guys. And look, Colorado, Tad Boyle's a hell of a coach. He's been to seven NCAA tournaments. They know how to win over there. That was never going to be an easy draw. And they were just a little bit better than Florida. If Florida somehow wins that game, you know, they maybe they beat Marquette. Maybe they go to the Sweet 16. It's, it's so unpredictable how these things work out. And almost every team that gets to the Final Four has a little bit of luck in a close game or they're the benefit of another upset in their bracket, so they have an easier path. Uh, all those things are true, and the SEC is still a damn good league and had a damn good year. We'll see how Alabama and Tennessee do, but for whatever reason, they had too many teams get bounced early in a lot of close games. Text on the Titan Mark text line from Jonathan. He says, Mike, in your opinion, what was more surprising to you, the Auburn or Kentucky loss? Oh gosh, it's Kentucky. Uh, I, I, I just, I just can't believe Kentucky let this happen for the second time in three years. I can't believe Kentucky hasn't been to the second weekend since 2019. I, I, I can't believe this version of Kentucky, which there, there's so many false narratives out there, Shane. I'm tired of people saying it's all because of the one and dones. Their top players all year long were Mitchell and Reeves. Those guys are like 24. Yeah. The, that's that's almost that's almost scapegoating the lack of success for Cal. The problem for Cal has been they don't they haven't been playing well, and that's on him. That's not because they're too young or they're too old or they're too this or they're too that. It's because they have not performed well. And that ultimately goes to the coach and the coaching staff, which is why there is an absolute uh, just hailstorm of criticism in the Commonwealth wanting answers or wanting change. And I don't know what's going to happen with a $33 million buyout, but I do know one thing, that is a fan base that is, is, hasn't been this frustrated and ang- downright angry in a long, long time. But it, I, I, that, to me, was the most shocking one, that they could let it happen again. I didn't think they were going to the Final Four because they didn't defend all year long. But I certainly thought they wouldn't lose a second first-round game in three years with that much talent. I agree. Live a healthier lifestyle with our bowl flavorful smoothies and our amazing food. Tropical smoothie, when you eat better, you feel better. Mike Morgan here uh, on the Titan Number Hotline, courtesy of Comfort Town. Mike, the ACC uh, – Obviously, they got three teams in. We know about North Carolina. This NC State run is remarkable. I don't think people realize. I want to say they were the 11 seed in their own conference tournament. I don't know where Clemson was in their own conference tournament. They're playing really good basketball. Are you surprised about those two teams? Yeah, I know Clemson was a six. And and I have a lot of respect for Brad Brownell. Uh, it seems like he's on the hot seat every third year up there. And I keep telling Clemson fans, like, 
who, what do you think, who do you think you're going to get that's better? Like he's, I think this is his fourth NCAA tournament in the last 12 years on the job. That's one out of every three years. That's probably the best Clemson is ever going to do. Uh, he's a good coach. He, he's been to a multiple sweet 16s. Do I love his team? No, but I, I, I like him enough to where I think it's a great story that they, they advance to a sweet 16. They've got one of the best uh, big men in the country. I don't like the matchup against Arizona. I think they're going to be a little bit overwhelmed by Arizona. As far as NC State, yeah, that's one of the best stories going. I can't call them a Cinderella. I know they're an 11 seed, but they won five games in five days at the ACC tournament. Uh, the, the Burns kid is kind of – he's like – I think this analogy the other day, Dimitri Shay, Hill. Every, yeah, but, but imagine if Dimitri Hill – if the if the nutritionist said Dimitri, you're looking a little frail. I need you to I need you to add two boxes of Twinkies every meal for the next six months before basketball season. I mean, he makes Dimitri Hill look diminutive. He, yeah. He's bigger than Demet Hook. I had classes with Demet Hook back in the day, and I remember how big he was. This dude is bigger, uh, and quite frankly, he's a little more skilled. He's he's a heck of a story. Uh, and NC State's a heck of a story, but I can't call them a dark horse. You play in the ACC, you win the ACC tournament. I, I think the overriding story of this tournament thus far, for those bragging about how good they're doing in their bracket, if you're winning your pool, you had a lot of chalk. You're picking you're picking a lot of favorites. You got all the ones and twos still alive. Every now and then we have a year like this. And as much as I love the upsets in the early going, when it gets to the Sweet 16, Shane, these are the matchups we all come to see. I mean, th- there's not a bad one in the bunch. You take a look at some of these point spreads. I, knew, I know you and JC were going over some of them earlier. Like, th- there, I think there's one double-digit point spread in the in the group it, with San Diego State, UConn, and even that game. Like San Diego State, they're certainly capable of putting up a fight against UConn. But all these games coming up. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, they're all going to be outstanding matchups. That's the one benefit of having kind of a chalky first weekend in the big dance. Out of the two SEC teams left, Alabama, obviously they got to play one seed North Carolina. I, I know they can score, but I'm a little concerned about them stopping the front court uh, of North yeah. Carolina. And then Tennessee, we know how they can play when they turn it on. You think they both can advance, or you think just uh, one or neither advance? Uh, I feel a lot more confident about Tennessee. Uh, Tennessee is the only team from the league that I picked to go to the final four. I, I, I just think this is the best chance that Rick Barnes has had in a while because of Dalton connect. They always defend. They're always physical. Uh, they're always a team that, you know, can win kind of ugly games, but now they can win a high scoring game with Dalton connect as well. Now they'll, they'll be tested by Creighton. Uh, Creighton's another one of those, you know, let me tell you, and the only reason I know so much about Creighton, my old high school coach back in South Florida, he was uh, he hired Doug McDermott when he was an assistant at Northern Iowa back when Kurt Warner was the quarterback. But I digress. So, but Creighton is a school in Omaha. They have no football. They have people like Warren Buffett giving them money, Mutual of Omaha giving them money. Uh, they got a lot of money. They they don't lose a lot of NIL battles at Creighton, believe it or not. And, and they are all about basketball. So don't look at Creighton as like this good little Cinderella, this little mid-major story that happens to now be in the Big East. They're a big-time player, and, and they have big-time resources. They have one of the best arenas. They, ha- they do great in attendance. They're like an SEC program. It just happens to play in Omaha and Nebraska. So that's not an easy matchup. But I, I think to your point, Shane, I agree, so Alabama – I just don't like the defense enough, and I don't like the the, un, the inconsistency behind the three-point line where if they're not hitting them, they're just not a great team. So I, I, I'd I love to see both these teams advance, and, and maybe they do. I have North Carolina in the Final Four. I'm ashamed to admit that because I don't like North Carolina, but I just like their draw. Uh, I think Alabama's going to have some problems there. I do think Tennessee pulls it out. I think Tennessee's got a really good shot at the Final Four. So who is your Final Four that you picked in your bracket? Uh, I'm not proud of this either. I've got North Carolina. I've got Duke. And I don't even know. I don't even like Duke. I mean, I don't love their team, but I just, again, I just did it based on matchups. 
I've got Tennessee, and yes, chalk. I've got UConn. I just can't. I can't find You're, a team right now that's going to beat them. You and I have three of the same four. I have UConn. No, no, I don't have UConn. I have UConn getting upset. Although I think they're going to win it all. I have Illinois, Tennessee, North Carolina, and Houston. That's who I have in my final four. So. Well, no, that's a, look. That's a great. That's a great. And I love Illinois. Uh, and I don't have my bracket in front of me, so. I, who, who's the who's the number one? Who's the Illinois, number one in their bracket? Illinois it plays Iowa State, but then they'd have to play UConn. Okay, yeah. So I have Illinois losing to to UConn, obviously. But I but I love Illinois. Uh, I love 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 Terrence Shannon's game. Uh, oh, I, you know, yeah. he's a kid now. He's bounced around Texas Tech. Uh, he's twenty three years old, and he's had some problems off the court, so he got suspended this year. But if you watch him play, uh, he's about as NBA ready as as anybody in the field. He he's a special talent at six six, bouncy, shot good. I believe he's a lefty. Uh, yeah. No, I, I mean if Illinois made it to the Final Four, great coach, Terrence Shannon, one of the best players in the field. It would not shock me at all. I, the only reason I had them losing is because they happen to be in the same bracket as UConn. Agree. Uh, a few more minutes here with Mike Morgan, Silverback Concrete, Bill's Firm Foundations for Generations. You stand on it, we stand by it. Andy's question on Facebook Live brought to you by Metal Law. Do you think the transfer portal will make it more difficult for mid-majors to get into the Sweet, sweet 16? Yeah, uh, moving forward, absolutely. Like, it, what's happening now, I mean, think of Florida if you didn't have the transfer portal. You know, if you didn't have uh, Pullen, if you didn't have Ann Lockton, now they uh, now they recruited well. I, I love how. Um, oh, by the way, to think about Florida without Walter Clayton, who was phenomenal in that game, and I sure sure hope comes back for another year because that's going to be a a big factor in everything. But yeah, I mean nowadays these coaches they all know who's good in the portal at the mid major level, and having done a couple of mid major games this year, I can tell you all these coaches know that. When they, when they have a, a star, when they kind of find a diamond in the rough, a two-star recruit that turns into a baller, they know they've only got him for that one year because he's going to be plucked out of the portal, he's going to get an NIL deal, and he's going to be gone. So, yeah, it's going to be much harder. Everything about the new system, every rule that's made, every, cha- every court case that's won, it all favors the big boys. So mid-majors are going to have a harder time keeping their talent and the vultures that are going to be circling them from the power six are all going to grab their best players year in, year out. Um, before we get you out of here, Dan wants to know what your broadcast schedule is like when you get back from vacation. I know you'll be doing – I know you do a lot of fill-in stuff for the Braves or whatever, but you're a baseball guy yeah. as well, Mike. Major League Baseball I I starts tomorrow? Starts tomorrow? Who you got in the World it, Series? Yeah. Thursday. Well, uh, you mentioned uh, you mentioned the Braves, and that that certainly is my team. Uh, you know, they're trying to win yet another divisional title. The last couple of years, though, they've they've spit the bit in the first round to, to the Phillies. I think it's a better Braves team. I know we got a lot of Braves fans in the state of Florida still. Um, I, I think the pitching depth, picking up a, a, a Chris Sale is is an incredible grab. The bullpen depth is incredible. And the lineup broke all kinds of records last year. It's all back intact. So I, I still think Atlanta is the most talented team in the National League. In the AL, uh, and I don't think the Dodgers are right there, too. I don't want to sell them short. The, be- the best team money could buy. Uh, in, in the American League, I think it's, it might be a little bit more interesting, quite honestly. I think there might be a few more teams that can uh, – that can battle for it. As far, as far as college, I know Florida took it on the chin to Florida State uh, last night. I think the best team in the SEC is Arkansas. Uh, and Dave Van Horn, for my money, for a long time, has been as good as any head coach in, in the sport. But Arkansas is loaded this year. And there's going to be a season where they break through and finally win the whole enchilada. Remember, they haven't done it. They, they're an SEC program. It's always good. And very often against Omaha, but has never won the whole thing. Uh, dropping a pop fly a few oh, years ago yeah. against Oregon State. I mean, I that, that. if I'm Dave Van Horn, I go to bed every night and I have a nightmare about that play. I have Man. an absolute nightmare. Oh my God! I mean, what a what just brutal way to to lose a national championship. But 
you know, the league is stacked once again. There's been a few odd results here lately. Uh, a, a few teams that have kind of underachieved that you know are better and a few that have overachieved that you wonder how long it can last during a 30-game conference grind. Uh, but Florida will certainly be up there. Stop sweating the midweek losses, folks. I mean, seriously, I get it. It could it could hurt you hosting or not hosting in the postseason, but your your bread is buttered based on those 30 conference games. So mm-hmm. if you lose a game to Jacksonville or Stetson, don't get all don't get all caught up. Obviously, you want to win your rivalry games, Florida State, Miami, but uh, don't get so bent out of shape. LSU fans do this all the time. They'll lose on a Tuesday night to McNeese State, Shane, and for the next forty eight hours, uh, all the fans rush to the message boards and are, are you know claiming bloody murder and the sky is falling, and then they'll win a national championship. I don't want to say they don't matter, but they're not nearly as crucial as what you do in league play. Yeah, I agree. Uh, the, the Gator Nation's in, in an uproar because we're 0-2 against the semis this year. Um, Christopher says on <laughs> YouTube, brought to you by Quality Plum, and Katie Johnson uh, from Auburn hit the portal. Uh, I don't see him coming to the Gators. Oh, gosh. He's, 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 he's a, is he still eligible? How many, I, I mean, he's he played nine forever. years. He's, I know. He started at Georgia, been at Auburn for a while. He's a head case. Uh, he I, I would want no part of him, and I, I doubt Todd Golden wants any part of him. Agreed. Mike, I seriously do. Yeah. Mike, good stuff as always, my man. We appreciate you taking the time on vacation. Enjoy it. And uh, we'll talk to you next week, bud. You got it, Shane. Appreciate it. That's Mike Morgan from the SEC Network. Join us on the Titan or Highline courtesy of Comfort Temp. He's brought to you by Campus USA Credit Union. Hope you all enjoyed today's program. We'll talk a little college football with Brent Beard tomorrow, our college football analyst and Heisman Trophy voter. You've been watching Pot Up with Matthews in the morning. Have a great day, folks. Take care. Thank you.